Did you know that 90% of the world's millionaires invest in real estate? Well, I'm Angel with the Academy Presents Real Estate Investing Rocks, and I'm here to help you if you want to go for your piece of that pie. Run into people who I think they're coming up with excuses. Right. But they're like, you know, I have nothing to offer. You know, what can I do that they can't already do? And I find this to be particularly true amongst people who like, kind of like me, like I think my superpower is networking. That's my thing. Well, Mm -hmm. most people who are successful are already successful networkers. So then it comes into, you know, what could I offer? And so just thinking about, you know, you said, you know, boots on the ground, being a secret shopper. There's always that chance that you're going to know people they don't know and introductions are huge and being able to be that connector or being able to offer that introduction can give you a little hand up sometimes so even if you think you have nothing to offer um if you've got an introduction that can usually get you something it's not going to be all of it but it can get you something. And I mean, honestly, all of us, I say all of us, many in that are entering the multifamily space, we had to learn. And there is a ton of information out there. Um, we've got Joe Fairless's best ever syndication book, and it's got a glossary in it. Get the book and learn the terms. Um, one of the things I tell my students, because I still teach college econ, is I say, you know, guys, write down those vocabulary words. Yeah, it's gonna feel like you're back in elementary school, but it's hard to speak a language when you don't know the vocabulary. And so really learning those terms, learning what the IRR is and learning what a cap rate is and learning all of those terms, it, it gets you further and it helps you look more experienced than you probably feel. So there's, there's, some, there's some truth in that. <laughs> Um, well, well, to start off with, you got to fake it so you make it to start off with, right? Because oh, absolutely, you, you know, within reason, right? You, you know, you don't want to tell people that you've you've got a hundred million dollar portfolio when you own nothing, right? But you, it's important to learn the terms because you know there is a terminology thing with with multifamily, right? Cap rate, cash and cash return, IRR, you know, um, terminal terminal cap rate, disposition, acquisition, asset management, so so many stuff. And if you don't if you can't talk the talk, right, it's, it's kind of hard to walk the walk. But to go back to what you said earlier about, like when you were saying like, what, what could, you know, successful people are successful networkers, right? Yes, but just because you have a skill that they have doesn't mean that you can't provide value. You can just replace that skill. So for example, they might hold a meetup event, right? And they don't want to arrange that meetup event every week or every month. And you say, hey, what if I was to, you know, you can just kind of show me the ropes and I'll, I'll host the meetup, meetup event. If you want to be there, great. If not, you know, it can be your meetup event, but I'll host it for you. I'm great at networking. I'm great at talking to people. There's always something you can provide. And if you, you know, it could be two things. It could be a limiting belief or it could be laziness that people say, I can, what can I do? There's nothing I can do. There's always something you can do. Always, 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 right? Even if you have the exact same skill set as that successful person has, well, well, use one of those skill sets that you have that that person has and just plug yourself into that, whatever that is, right? If it's underwriting, if you're great with numbers, if that guy can not have to underwrite or underwrite less, or you give him a second set of eyes to look at his underwriting and help him, you know, you know, even the new people can, can sometimes see something that um, an experienced person ha- hasn't because they're looking out with fresh eyes and they're more eager, you know, Some, sometimes when you look at things over and over and over, you kind of you miss stuff because you just, you, you know, you've, you've seen it a million times and you just, you know, you, it's easy to miss up sometimes. So there's always something you can do. If, and if you don't believe that, you just, you either have that limiting belief and you've got to just reprogram your brain or there's a laziness there that you just want that excuse again. It's easy to, it's easy to say, right, uh, they have the same skill size. Nothing I can do. Okay, let me go back to doing nothing. Yeah. That's well, easy, I, I, I gotta tell you that I needed to hear that. Okay. Um, <laughs> because like, what is my skill? My skill is I can talk. Um, Well, everybody can talk. (laughs) And so I've walked into situations before and have thought, what can I possibly add to this person? Other than I've got a few introductions, 
maybe one, maybe two. Um, well, that's the start. person's already well connected. <laughs> well, that's the start. Yeah, like you said, he yeah. doesn't know everyone you know. You know, and you have this platform now that, you know, you're going to make even more connections. You know, it's just like, there's always someone that you can connect with, right? That they don't know. It might be a family member, right? They don't, but how they, maybe they do. I don't know if they know all your family, but there's always, always something you can do, right? There's always something yeah. you can do. That speaks to me. Just oh, good. That, those, those limiting beliefs. Yeah, that, um, that we all have them. I have my, I have yeah. my own, you know, I have my own for sure. And it's, 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 um, not to get off the real estate stuff, but it's, you know, it's about understanding who you are, right? You've got to try and understand who you are. And we're all trying, I guess, that to some extent, but you know, you, you've got to have some self-reflection and understand what your limiting beliefs are. Because um, without that, you know, how, how are you going to get better, right? How, how are you going to um, improve on yourself and figure stuff out, right? If you, if you don't know your weaknesses, if you don't know those, we all, nobody's perfect, right? There's no way that there's anyone out there that's perfect. You know, even the most successful people have things that they work on. They have, they talk about it all the time. They have performance coaches. I heard Brandon Turner talk earlier about a performance coach that he has, and he works on stuff that, you know, is an issue. Like he, he said early on, he's tried to raise money and people, um, um, didn't invest with him early on about four years ago right now he's a um, money raising machine but about four years ago he tried to raise money and the two people that he asked said no and he was like oh my god they don't like me that was his limiting belief right he didn't believe that um that that people wanted to invest in because they didn't like him so he stopped like he, that was his limiting belief and that was his personality getting in his way so he didn't try for a long time earlier and then uh, for a long time afterwards and then eventually he asked these people Hey, why didn't you guys invest with me? He said, oh, we just, we didn't have some personal situation at the time. We didn't have any money. Otherwise we would have, but we just didn't have any money. And this whole four years, he'd stopped himself from doing that because he, he believed that these people didn't like him and he, he hated that rejection and it was painful and, and he, he let that stop him. But in, in reality, it was just that these people didn't have money. It was nothing to do with him, yeah. you know? So, wow. you know, it's, it's, that we, it's something that we've all got to learn to try and, figure out who we are to some extent right yeah well and, and to not take those things personally i know right now you know i'm getting ready to put on the summit my husband and i and i'm kind of the face of it he's the um background guy but i've recently discovered i'm really not good about like being persistent with people to get um you know audio recordings or endorsements and all of those things and so it's not so much that I'm afraid to ask, but I, inside myself, I wonder, you know, it's that, it's that thing of, you know, it, it's a personal thing. And I'm like, well, are they not responding to me because they don't like me? And then if it's not, they don't like me, it's, am I not valued enough? Do I not have enough? Do I not have a high enough value to request those things? Mm -hmm. And those things aren't true. Um, it's, it's, it's like a game that your head is playing with you. I mean, you're absolutely worth it. You're absolutely of that value. And you have to just put those things aside as hard as it is. Um, I have to get, a, I have to get people involved to help me because those limiting beliefs are so strong within myself that I haven't learned to put them aside yet. I know I will someday but it's really tough. It, it, it's tough to put those self-limiting beliefs, like just to push them aside and keep going through them. So it's a, it's a work in progress all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm the same. And we're guilty of just thinking about our situation, right? Like take, take the example of those videos now, right? You just think, well, they haven't sent, maybe you've asked for them once and they haven't sent them yet. So they're like, well, they just, they can't be bothered or they don't really want to do this summit or they just, like you said, they don't like me or they don't value me. But then you think about yourself, right? Has anyone, has anyone ever asked you to do something and you've forgotten and you haven't done it and you put it off and you're like, okay, I'll do that in a minute. Cause you're doing, you have 10 million other things, you know? And then, so once you start thinking like that, especially with, I'm, I'm guessing the people who are reaching out are successful people as well. You know, when you start thinking about maybe why that is a realistic, why, right? Not, not our limiting beliefs and our, um, you know, <laughs> the negative mindset that we may have sometimes is that you realize that, you know, okay, maybe, wow, okay, maybe I'm 
not an asshole. Maybe they don't hate me. Maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe they really, and a lot of times, actually, when you think about it, if something like the summit is a great platform and a great opportunity for people. So actually they probably want to do it. They've just either forgotten, haven't got around to it yet. Think that they have time. Didn't realize the rush. You know, there's so much more that, that it could be, but we're all so guilty, me included. But I think so many of us look inwards towards the problem and why something is happening. Whereas, you know, there's so many more logical reasons why something is happening rather than we're terrible and we suck and, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, and, and I will say too, you know? I mean, one thing is like, as humans, we want to lay blame. Well, as entrepreneurs, as a, we're going to blame ourselves first because we're going to take responsibility for it. Uh -huh. And so we're going to inwardly blame ourselves at the get go because we're used to taking responsibility for it. Why didn't this happen? Well, because I, I'm taking responsibility for it. It didn't happen because I didn't do it. And so like natural response for me is, Oh, well, they're, they're not, you know, they're not doing this or they're not doing that because of me. What did I do? What do I need to change to make this happen? But you know, oftentimes we'll, we'll suck into ourselves and be like, well, you know, self limiting beliefs come out. And actually what I've heard them called is, um, it's those, it's those little pieces that they kind of just nag at you all the time and they're not real, whether it's you being too judgmental on yourself or you being super busy or it's, um, it's actually from, I'm trying to see it over here. It was from a series that we were told about. It was um, something intelligence, positive intelligence, maybe. Um, there was a TED talk on it. Oh, I'm looking at the book. I need to look at it. Um, oh. I know where it's at on the shelf and I can't read it. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was this idea that you've got these saboteurs that are like, within you and they work against you and when you've got those self-limiting beliefs which you know sitting here talking about it, i probably need to go get that book and get back on it because yeah. i know that I, i'm letting these saboteurs come at me right now and pull me down when like you said it, it's probably something 100 percent outside of me and even outside of the person that it's that it's happening with you know, life is happening, things are busy. And instead those saboteurs are coming at me saying, oh no, it's you. Nope, it, it has nothing to do with anything but you. <laughs> and um, it's, it's just those ideas that, that there could be something else in play. And so if you've never heard of the saboteurs, at least give it a look. I'll see if I can't find some of the true terminologies of it, um, but they are saboteurs and they, influence how basically how you think about yourself but once you can identify these saboteurs for what they are it's easier to go oh you're just a saboteur and push it aside um i'm not saying it's super easy clearly i'm still having issues with it and i know about the saboteurs um <laughs> but it's it's a way to help with it so that you can be like oh that's just xyz that's not true that's a fraud and so you can identify it and let it pass or push it away and move on to what's really going on. So. So it's, it's that self talk, isn't it? You know, they talk about it. Like you, you talk to yourself so much more than you ever realize, right? You're talking to yourself all, all day long, right? Like, you know, when we're not, when you're not focused on something else, you're probably talking to yourself right? and what you say to yourself is so important because you talk to yourself more than anyone ever anyone else ever talks to you right so you've just got to be be very careful mindful what that self-talk is right it's so easy to get caught up in that negative self-talk and that that compounds as well if you get into to that negative self-talk you know everything you know it can just make it can snowball it can make everything seem worse right like you said like um you know they don't like me they don't want to help me it's because of me i'm not worthy and then that can you know lead into different aspects of your life and all of a sudden everything you talk about is is negative right but the good thing is once you start to realize it and you you know you, you're aware of the self-talk so one thing is to know that you talk to yourself i don't think people necessarily realize how much they talk to themselves so it's one to realize that we talk to each to to ourselves all day every day right and to kind of start monitoring that once you start monitoring that 
you know, you know, like it's, I, I'm guilty as guilty of it as anyone is, you know, and I think we're all guilty of it, but you can kind of reprogram your brain. It's amazing what you can start to do once you, once you start telling you stuff. And it, even if it's um, artificial, if it's not real to start off with, right. If you say, yeah, people want to be around me. Yeah. People want to send me a message. Yeah. People want to do this with me. Yes. I am this person. Yeah. I'm going to be successful. Yeah. I'm blah, blah, blah. It, if you just say it, force yourself to say it's stuff start off with right you'll be surprised how much you can kind of change that and i've been learning a lot about that lately it's like if you're in a bad mood smile right if you're in a bad mood just smile like it's hard <laughs> like eat, just do it like even if you have to like literally use your fingers and force your mouth up into that position right because you're having a bad day or you're you know you're annoyed with someone or something hasn't gone your way right just smile right i used to write down and maybe i should get back to this i should write down my i used to write down my goals every day but i used to write down some quotes what i wanted to achieve for the day my goals but also i would write um smile i would write like 10 times smile 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 just to to to, to force it in there and once you start smiling like it's amazing how different the day can be and how, how we can change your mood right and it's the same thing with the self-talk once you force it in a different direction it really is surprising how how much you can change it, it, it's uh it's really cool actually once you start learning about it yeah well and i had to look it up once i started talking about it but it's called your inner saboteurs okay. and of course there is like the big one is the judge where you just judge yourself all the time and mm -hmm. then there's like the controller the hyper achiever the hyper rational which my husband is very very rational he's an engineer and so he'll spend more time rationalizing and just um like breaking it down instead of acting on it or moving on it um you've got the pleaser um and then the stickler and the victim and there's a couple more in here, but it was, it is positive, um, intelligence. <laughs> so it's, it's a really neat place to start. There's Ted talks on it. Um, if you ever wanted to look it up and it gives you another way to look at things. And so, you know, instead of feeling attacked and getting all victimish on me, um, which I think a lot of people will do, you'll be like, well, that person just doesn't like me. Well, that's playing the victim. So push that out of the way. Um, well, they don't like me because of this. Well, now you're being a judge. Quit judging yourself. Push that aside. You know, maybe they're just busy or maybe they're like you and they've got their hands in 50 million things that are going on and it just slipped their mind. So, but it's, it, it's definitely identifying those saboteurs and realizing which thoughts, which man, I really let myself down on this one. I really should have been thinking about those things instead of taking things personally. So thank you. <laughs> I needed to hear You're that. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to help, but I'm glad to help. Well, yeah, it just, it, honestly, <laughs> you don't know how much it helped because I've been pretty down on myself and I've been really frustrated for the past few days and going back and thinking about something that I, I had already learned about with the saboteurs and just that limiting belief um, changes things up for me and it's given me a better day. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> But, and, and for other, you know, for others of you that are out there, um, I know that you've got another thing you have to get to, so we can kind of wrap up here, but if you haven't ever looked at positive intelligence and you haven't ever looked at those inner saboteurs or self-limiting beliefs or self-talk, um, I have zero doubt that I talk to myself all the time because I do so out loud. So I hear <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> but a lot of times you talk to yourself in your head. Um, and you don't realize how much you're talking to yourself. So it's like that inner voice of conscious, you know, and you just, you don't realize it because you're not talking out loud. Um, so, but take some time and at least look at the Ted talk that talks about those inner saboteurs and see what you can find out there on those self-limiting beliefs, because a lot of times the only thing holding us back is ourselves. And it's often better to do than to do perfectly because perfection takes forever and doesn't happen so you kind of just have to do it and then worry about how to fix it later um, it doesn't always work out wonderful sometimes you wind up in a house where um you know you're taking less rent than what the mortgage is because you don't want to sell the house um <laughs> and i'm i'm pointing that out to you too but we've done it um, you fall in love with the house and you don't want to let it go it's you fall into that trap of looking at a house as something other than just numbers 
and that is especially easy to do when it is your personal residence. So um, just kind of throwing that out there totally off topic. But um, anyway, Barry, thank you for being here today and being on this episode. And thank you for giving me um, just some food for thought and helping me look back at something that I had already learned but wasn't applying. I really can't explain to you just the burden that has been lifted from my shoulders right now. Um, and I hope that I hope people can see it because I feel the expression change and I'm, I'm like looking and I'm like, wow, I just look happier um, because it's huge burden lifted from my shoulders because realizing that your beliefs aren't necessarily, aren't necessarily a reflection of reality is huge. Wow. Um, again, thank you for being here. Uh, <laughs> for those of you watching on the Academy Presents Real Estate Investing Rocks, I will see you next week. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, and I hope that you will join us again next time. So have a great day and see you later.